Hello, and welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. In today's video, we're gonna discuss our embouchures. Are they as important as we make them out to be? Let's find out. So what role does our embouchure play in helping us create a sound out of a brass instrument? Before we dig any deeper, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. For brass players, our embouchure is probably the topic that's discussed the most. There is a lot of emphasis put on how we form our lips. For me, my embouchure is something that I thought about all the time. I always thought about the strength of my corners, what's happening with my chin, how are the lips buzzing and vibrating. That was something that was very relevant to me in order to creating a sound out of the instrument. It wasn't until my battle with focal dystonia that I really had to start analyzing what's going on with my embouchure. I've always been a pretty natural player, and throughout the years, I've never had any teachers switch up my embouchure and tell me a specific way that I had to play. Throughout that time, I did what worked. I never changed my embouchure around, and I figured as long as I'm getting the results that I intend, everything must be functioning properly. The question I had to ask myself was, is the way that I form my lips the most efficient way for me to play? Through studying and retraining, I realized that the position and the formation I had my lips in was not exactly the best way for me to play. Now my embouchure went from looking like this to this. That's a pretty drastic change, but I found that the way that I'm playing now is far more efficient for me than the way that I played before. There's a few key aspects about the embouchure that I'd like to point out. One is that the embouchure should not form the airstream. The airstream should form the embouchure. The primary function of our embouchure is to support the airstream. We should take note that every airstream is a little different. So there will be slight variations in our embouchures from note to note. I like to look at the variations in our lip formations a lot like when we speak our language. There's a lot of subtle movements that happen with each word that we speak. We don't want the thought pattern to be that different when we play our instruments. If we think too much about our lip formation, we could actually be hindering our airflow from functioning as freely as it can. There's been times in my professional career where my embouchure was at the forefront of my thought process, even in the midst of me performing. We generally start thinking about how well our embouchure is gonna function in times of extremes. If we have to play something really fast or really slow, really soft or really loud, at that point, the embouchure will come to the forefront of our thoughts. One aspect of our embouchures that I think gets overemphasized is the corners. The strength of our corners is something that we talk about quite a bit. If our corners are too tense, we can wind up inhibiting the airflow from traveling freely through the lips. Another issue that we can run into is fatigue. Now it's no different from any other muscle in our body. If we keep that muscle under tension for a long period of time, eventually it is going to fail. We want to focus on what all the muscles of the embouchure are doing and how they work in conjunction with one another, not just what's happening with our corners. Another thing we need to look at is the opening of our apertures. If our apertures are too tight around the airstream, it's going to be a fight between the airstream trying to get out and the aperture trying to keep it in. So we wanna make sure that the opening in our aperture is sufficient for that particular airstream. Remember, we are here to support the airstream, not to make it do what we think it needs to do. I'll show you a little trick that I like to use to make sure my lips are in the right formation. 
So I'll pretend that my pinky finger is the airstream. And what I want to do is I want to create a seal around the airstream so that I can inform my body my lips are functioning the right way to support the airstream. So I'll do something like this. For a little over 12 years, I had the honor of working with the Duke Ellington Orchestra. One of the songs that we played nightly was Mood Indigo. Mood Indigo is a soft, intimate ballad and the melody is played by a trio of instruments. There's a trumpet and a mute, clarinet, and the trombone with a plunger. I'm gonna play the trombone part for Mood Indigo, and I'm gonna use my fingers to demonstrate what was happening with my lips before and what's going on now. This is an exploration in efficiency, not in effectiveness. So this song is usually played with the pixie mute and the plunger. And a lot of times it came at the end of the show when fatigue started to set in. The yellow straw is representing the airstream and my fingers are my lips. Now this used to be my lip position before. They were very close and I blew the lips apart. And then changed my embouchure to have the lip formation be how it is here. The lips are just sitting there, and the airstream is free to travel through. Back to the look of the old position, and the new position. There's a lot less work for me to do, but I'm still getting the same results. If we take our focus off the subtleties of our embouchure and redirect that to our airstream and to the music we're playing, it could make our jobs a whole lot easier. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.